Umbrella Body of Yoruba Self-Determination Group's Ilana Omo Odoa 100 on Friday described the allegation of terrorism slammed against a prominent Yoruba nation agitator, Chief Sunday Adeyemo, fondly called Sunday Igboho, as an inconsistent expression coined to tarnish a noble and constitutional struggle of the Yoruba people. The group, led by a renowned historian, Professor Banji Akintoye, said the statement linking Igboho with an indicted sponsor of terrorism is empty, watery, cruel, and irresponsible, stating that the federal government is just chasing shadows and attempting to bully the struggle for self-determination of the Yoruba people out of relevance. In the statement by its communications secretary, Mr. Maxwell Adelaide, 100 said there was nowhere in the report read by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, where Igboho was found sponsoring terrorism, saying linking an Igboho to terrorism because he transferred 12.7 million to a friend or someone who is an indicted promoter of terrorism is an embarrassment to Igboho and status and brand. The statement reads, we have read the statement credited to Mr. Abubakar Malami, son, on behalf of the Nigerian government. Our preliminary position is that having been defeated legally and morally, the Fulani-controlled government of Nigeria is now chasing shadows, bullying the truth and making an inconsistent attempt to tarnish a noble struggle of the Yoruba people. There was nowhere in the statement where Igboho was directly or indirectly linked to terrorism. We only read that Igboho transferred the sum of 12 million seven hundred and fifty thousand naira only to one Abdullahi Usman, who is a friend of someone who is now an indicted promoter of terrorism. We're surprised how that has become a crime. Was there any linkage between Igboho and the original indicted promoter of terrorism? What was the money Igboho paid into Abdullahi Usman meant for? Is Igboho now the one fording terrorism in the north? Even if there was an association between the real indicted promoter of terrorism and Igboho, which the Malami statement did not say, was it legitimate or was it on terrorism? The federal government also accused an invisible lawmaker of sponsoring Igboho and the struggle for self-determination in Yoruba land. The transactions between Igboho and the federal lawmaker was dated back to 2013 that was hilarious and absolutely inconsistent was there a struggle for self-determination in 2013 for instance we started a struggle for self-determination in 2019 but the nigerian government is labeling the transaction between igboho a political figure and freedom fighter and unknown political figure dated back to 2013 as funds for promotion of yoruba nation struggle for self-determination igboho is a renowned automobile dealer so anyone could buy cars from him we are however Ever glad that the Nigerian government is now displaying heavy shallowness and emptiness before the world while attempting to bully and tarnish a just and constitutional agenda that has been declared noble and legal by a court of competent jurisdiction which is the government has not appealed against. The most atrocious part of the accusation against Igboho was stating that Igboho is sponsoring terrorism because he transferred the sum of 12 million naira to a friend of an indicted promoter of terrorism. To us in 100, the accusations against Igboho are ridiculous, cruel and petty, irresponsible and childish. The Nigerian government is now frustrated, having lost the battle against the agitation for self-determination, both in the court of law and public opinion, hence resorted to blackmail and media bully. Just today, the remaining two arrested eight of Igboho in detention since July were released by the DSS on court order. Therefore, the Yoruba people are anxiously waiting to know the invisible federal lawmaker accused by the Fulani controlled Nigerian government of supporting Igboho so that we can celebrate him or her as a true son or daughter of the soil for associated with a just and noble cause. Our advice to Malame is to use his energy towards ensuring that the current 99, 1999 constitution of Nigeria is abolished and a referendum is conducted so that the indigenous people of the South and Middle Belt can decide on their nationhood and sovereignty rather than working against posterity and propelling a bad history for himself.